So I go to put Amazon Prime on my like smart TV. I try to like sign in. I thought I'd get like a free trial or something. So it's like, oh, please like click the sign in. I hit the button and I signed into my Amazon account and it just charged me fucking $65. For the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> like give me an option. How do they know I didn't want to do it monthly? Or give me like a free trial of Amazon Prime. Yeah, nope. You, you signed like, in. Here you go. They signed don't do in. a free trial, right? Amazon Prime. I don't know. They at least should tell you. It's a good deal though. 65 for the whole year. But at least warn me. Sixty five for the whole year? Yeah. Wow. I did I did that one time for like a fancy app. It was like to help you out with fancy and it was I didn't realize this. Like it it said like two hundred dollars equals out to X amount per month. I'm like, oh, I'll do that. It's not bad a month. And it charged me two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, they, like, they, oh, they like, charge you that. God. Well, because they always do that. I didn't like, read that right. Well, it's like yeah. sign into your Amazon account to start uh, to get Prime. I'm like, all right, let me sign in. Let me click the button. I just be like, oh, monthly, yearly, free trial. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you got the shit on now. Your phone. You are charged. now Jeff Bezos' personal assistant. <laughs> yes. It's like the uh, terms and agreements. Imagine Aaron as Alexa. Hey, Aaron. Fuck you want. I'm sleeping. <laughs> People love superheroes. They swoop out of the sky and save the day. People love that cozy feeling. That superheroes give them. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. On today's show, we are reviewing The Boys. The Boys, Boys new Amazon show. Yeah, You know what? I'm surprised I didn't use that song. Aaron's like, oh, it's going to be too on the nose. I'm like, everything in this show is on the nose. There's a guy who's literally oh. Superman. Yeah. <laughs> it was a flash. It's, it's a little too obvious. You know, this show caught me off guard. I thought it was just going to be like a, like a parody of each superhero. I, I didn't think it was going to be this good. You know what it reminds me of? It's kind of like a porno. Where yeah. all the costumes, <laughs> no. it's like they're mimicking. Yeah. I hated A Train's costume. It was horrible. I said that to Aaron too. I was like, "Why? They're always in their costumes." Yeah, Starlight's never take the only off. one that yeah. doesn't have it. Yeah, she's in casual clothing, but everybody else is just. But it's like really well written. And somebody once said that Game of Thrones is the best written porno ever. Oh, the boys have something to say here. Move over, Game of Bones. <laughs> Got the boys. But yeah, the boys, based on the comic book series, an R-rated, irreverent superhero adaptation, and that's a good point about it being a parody because it has a lot of satirical elements. And, you know, just right off the bat, it is so obviously based on the Justice League, yeah. the Seven, these iconic heroes, Homelander is Superman, Black Noir is Batman, Flash, A-Train, Wonder Woman, Maeve. And that's what grabbed me because oh, I was, man. that was done on purpose. They had to have casted somebody who looked like Vinnie Chase <laughs> to be the entourage Aquaman. <laughs> And he's such a douche, too. He's like Vinny Chase. <laughs> he was the biggest dickhead out of all of them. They all kind of suck. Well, that opening, it's like, oh, they're heroes. Yeah. Homelander, perfect grin, blonde hair. <laughs> it literally made me, I, when I first saw it, I'm like, wow, is Homelander really this fucking oblivious? I just want to know who you saved today. Well, the way they set him up, too, because it begins, obviously, that scene where Robin dies, Huey's girlfriend dies. That was horrible. When you ever besmirch Billy Bill. That was horrific. She just got obliterated. I did not see that coming. Because I, I came into this show. Neither did Robin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nice. I came into this show by you. And I was like, all right, maybe, you know, it's just, it's on Amazon, a little graphic. And then just kept building off of that. And it was, it was a wild ride. It just gives you that taste of the world right yeah. away. It looked great, too. Especially, like, compared yeah. to the CW shows, which look pretty bad. Time to make America grod again. Clearly some grievances and some of the abc marvel stuff this one looked great even uh the netflix like jessica jones season two they had like one of the speed guys it looked like shit this show looked really good and from that opening scene too when Maeve goes through the uh armored vehicle and you see all the gears and all the parts of the car go through her it looked fucking awesome and a lot of the effects and powers like, i guess lend to a lot of practicality but even like the cgi and all the stuff where you needed effects it looked Really good for a television show. It's kind of like the golden age, silver age of superheroes. The costumes are very cheesy. They're not making them like they do in the movies to look like actually cool. They look like comic book characters come to life. Although Homelander's costume, I thought was the best out of all of them. Black Noir's got a good one too. Yeah. Oh, he had the best one. I yeah. can't. I'm pretty upset about Black Noir. I thought we were gonna get more of him. We should have got more of him. Well, you weren't impressed with his piano solo. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, he, he stung that guy so hard. <laughs> that boy was like, move over. You getting up or no guy? He literally, that's the definition of no one, black noir. Well, what do you guys think about the boys? Led by Carl Urban as Billy Butcher. It was a great dynamic with all of them. Carl was fantastic. And whoever played, who played Frenchie? You know uh, Carl personally? No. Yeah, it's I don't want to say his last name. You're really going to ask us who played Frenchy? Do you know? <laughs> Tomer, Tomer, Cap- yeah, Brad Carl. is really good in Captain. <laughs> What's his name? How do you say his name? Tomer? Yeah, that whole dynamic was fantastic. Carl Urban is hilarious, and I love his accent. He's <laughs> so good, yeah. I need that accent. Good to meet you. Love that accent. Well, at first, when he uh, first met uh, Huey, and he's like, I'm in the FBI, I'm like, hey, can FBI be from other countries? <laughs> Yeah, they, well, I guess they could, right? I guess so. Yeah, they've come I, a, a they came here a while ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's been here for a while. Well, that threw me off. Well, it turns out uh, he wasn't really FBI, but yeah, their whole dynamic was great. And every every time they added someone and you had uh, Frenchie came into the mix and then Mother's Milk, they all really uh, blended well together. You know what I love most about them is that usually, you know, they'd be some black ops government agent. They're sanctioned by the CIA. They have all this equipment. Yeah. They kind of suck, you know? They, they no. suck, but they're effective. Like, they walked ass backwards into killing Translucent. That was just so lucky. He's like, oh, I slap the soups around when they get out of line. Well, A.K.A. I just ass- hit them with a truck. Or a car. Translucent went ass backwards into some C4. <laughs> he's dead, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did he, if he exploded, if, if his outsides are indestructible and they exploded him with the inside, wouldn't he just, like, combust internally and not splat? Like a star? Just cave in on himself. Guess I that's not know. a cinematic. I think you're. I think you're picking right now. Yeah, you, you, I'm just <laughs> saying. I don't. I don't mind it. But there's a couple of that, and when they had sounds the race, like you hate the show. When A Train was racing the guy, and it said live on pay per view in a billboard, and it was clearly broadcast on ESPN. <laughs> Did <laughs> you really say that? These are the things I, I noticed. Notice. I always like when they have that touch, like the PTI guys debating A Train versus the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Personally, I think playing a villain is probably like one of the hardest roles to play in the movie because you got to sell it, and you got to be good at being a villain. You can't really fake it. Because yeah. my viewers didn't catch on to that. They all played the villain great, especially uh, Homelander. When he came on the screen, it was like, you were genuinely scared because this guy, he has no weakness. And if you piss him off, he's going to act up and like, he could kill anyone. And, and he would. And he did. It was very unjust as Superman. That's what I got from him. Especially, like, just everyone else so afraid of him and knowing that he can kill them at any moment he wants. Yeah. But sometimes he was, like, the calm... Captain America type where he was very to the public he was very nice and when he wanted to put on like a good face like oh what'd you guys do good today like he could do yeah. that very well too but and we'll see like flip it a switch next scene he's just fucking ruthless yeah and even when he's like in the plane it's a perfect example he's on the plane he's calming everyone down he's being Homelander that everyone sees him once he knows shit's going south he's like oh. Homelander are you going to save us oh sweetheart of course I'm going to save you you betcha you stay the fuck back or I'll laser you, goddammit! I'll laser every fucking one of you! Stay back! That scene <laughs> fucked me up, dude. Because yeah, that's dude. like your hero. It's like The Rock. If you're in a plane that's crashing and The Rock comes in and he saves the day and then he abandons you, that's what it's like. When he was trying to calm everyone down, maybe he was trying to just uh, come up with a way for him to save everybody, and he's like, listen, this is not a comic book. Those things wouldn't work. I can't just fucking pick up the plane or bring everybody down. And when he's getting ready to leave and they start to, to push back and he flips out on them, this dude is fucking nuts with the laser eyes. I think he did that on purpose, taking the plane down. When I first saw it, I was like, oh man, it was an accident. But he really whipped his head around. Like, it wasn't like an accident. Like, he could have just beamed right at the terrorist. Well, he's very nonchalant about it. He's just lazy in that moment. He sees these people as inferior. Yeah. So it's all about the mission. It's if I save them, then I could spin this as soups in the military or... If the plane crashes like it did, then we could spin it as, oh, I wasn't able to be here because I wasn't sanctioned. I wasn't allowed. And in the comic, it's actually changed. It's actually 9-11 that he allows to happen because it's based. Originally, this came out in 2006. So that's why they have the terrorist angle. They have the the religious aspect that these heroes come from God. I guess playing into the whole like letting it happen to shift the narrative. I was very impressed about like all the world building and everything that evolved having superheroes in like the real world setting. Just monetizing them, worrying about like numbers, polling numbers, demographics, who they appeal to, their Twitter mentions and stuff like that. It's something that if there was a uh, privatization of superheroes, it would look something similar to this. It almost feels like a metaphor for K-pop. If you read about K-pop in South Korea, they get them when they're young, 
They train them for years. They put them through school, and then they expose them to the world. Then you got Gangnam Style, you know, open <laughs> Gangnam Style. That's Homelander, you know. He's Psy. So that's that's what I. If you dig deeper, sometimes you could find these things. But it was like they were like it was like a mix of like a young and up and coming celebrity in Hollywood, and then kind of politicizing them into, I guess. Yeah, these the women. mainstream audience, like, right? Who, yeah, you're, you're you're doing well with this audience. This is why we picked you. Which they say a bunch of times. They say play to your strengths. It's like yeah, if there's a there's a water fight, they send a deep. If there's a nighttime, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something from the war. <laughs> if there's a nighttime, I don't know. <laughs> if you're uh, you know, don't don't solve crimes in the day. Yeah, that's not you no more. And the way they establish like how like common superheroes are, you really got like the whole human spectrum within these heroes because usually there's like a few heroes and you apply probably the best of humanity to them. You know, caring, good, justice. Then you have the other side, the villains who are just evil um, and manipulating and all these different characteristics. But when you have so many and they're so such a commonplace. That really, that spectrum, I guess, is shown throughout all of them, where they're all not ev- not all good, not all evil. Some of them are misunderstood. Some of them come from different backgrounds, different religions. So it's really, it casts it a wide net by having it such a commonplace. Because they say there are like 200 superheroes on, ve- uh, what's it called? Vo- Vault's roster? Yeah. 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 And that's not to mention all the ones that didn't get picked by them. Right. Like Starlight yeah. had to like apply for that job. Right. Yeah. Which... And celebrity culture too. It's there's a comic called yeah. Wicked and Divine where it's every I think it's there's a time period where these gods come back to Earth and they're reincarnated as pop stars. So that's kind of what they're going for here, is that you have these superheroes that are looked upon as as gods, and that's what Vaught is really selling them. And the character, Elizabeth Shue, playing Stillwell, Madeline Stillwell, who was running the show. She was great. She was incredible. The yeah. dynamic between her and Homelander, that is such a weird and complicated, <laughs> was, layered relationship. It was awkward watching it. The, uh, the, the mommy issues that Homelander is having, uh, the way that she's able to, the way that she was able to control him until the very end when she gets her fucking eyes blitzed out. <laughs> um, uh, what were you saying? But I, I guess that opens it up to the conspiracy that the boys figure out is that they're giving this Compound V to babies around the country. They're just manufacturing superheroes. This is what I feel like we would have gotten in Stranger Things, the first season, where they take these babies and they're testing on them in, in Logan. Like, this is what would happen. Like, they're training these babies and they're villains. And one company has them all. And it, it's scary to think about it because, I mean, imagine this happens. And like, right. In real if, life, I pump my baby full of the V. <laughs> Make I take it too. Actually, no, I train my kid to be Batman. No superpowers. Well, I mean, Homelander's the only one really uh, created. The like, in I guess he was made in a lab. He seems like the first one, right? Yeah, like he's and Jesus. Everyone else, you kind of see how. Well, that's why I was confused when, at first when they picked Starlight to join the Seven because she's so different from the rest of them. I don't know. It didn't feel like a good fit because she actually has like morals. And but I guess we learned from like the Deep's little side plot, which was weird. That they focus so much on him, but you, you saw yeah, he fucking you lost saw him, like, his mind. Dude. Have like this midlife crisis <laughs> yeah. and A Train talking about like their past and Maeve as well. It's like I guess they get them when they're young and impressionable, and they're able to manipulate them to be, I guess, more evil. Be the annoying goody two shoes asshole that you are. One of us has to be. Yeah, and uh, Billy and Huey have a similar relationship as well. He chooses him because he has this vendetta of avenging Robin and he's able to manipulate him and turn him into a killer it's similar to the relationship that Billy had with the CIA agent uh, Mallory the deep I think is what keeps this from being a near perfect season because everything with the deep sucks yeah and I can understand the first episode when he he sexually assaults Starlight and then I guess they kind of try and redeem him that he's almost a victim of the society that superheroes have created yeah which is, sure, you could still consider this guy an asshole, like he should be in prison. <laughs> I honestly laughed, man, when he stopped short and the <laughs> dolphin went through. He did go like, okay, I'll touch it. I did I feel agree. bad for the lobster. I agree with yeah. I, was, yeah. I laughed with that part too. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, of I'll dark, take that one. There's a lot there's, of dark comedy moments, like when A Train goes to visit the kid in the hospital. My wish was to meet Translucent. That was my only wish. He's my hero. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, maybe he can swing by next week or some. 
<laughs> like <laughs> stuff I like want that. A translucent. And even like the little <laughs> things made me laugh uh, hard when when he's like. When Homelander's having a, like, powwow with the crew, he's like, all of you guys have been fucking up recently. Except for Black Noir here. Erratic. Unreliable. Downright sloppy. Not you, Noir. You've been great. And he's just yeah. sitting there, and yeah. he hasn't said a word all yeah. series. <laughs> You've been great, Black Noir. <laughs> yeah. I like to I like to think that he's just out there taking care of his own business. He's working. He's he's working. That's he's completely lunch oblivious. Failed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's a lunch fail. Yeah, he comes to work, gets his job done, goes home. Is it me or Homelander? Kind of reminded me of Chris Pine. Yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. I couldn't put a name on him. Like this guy, it's pissing me off. He, I think <laughs> it, the actor's name is Anthony Starr. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot of Chris Bond to him. And, and Huey reminded me of Jack's films, like a YouTube, the YouTuber. <laughs> For some reason, I kept seeing his face on He reminded there. me of Bill Hader. <laughs> Anthony Starr as Homelander was the best performance. I mean, when it gets to the end, when they reveal the big conspiracy about him, that he has a child with Billy's wife, that, to me, the ending was phenomenal that yeah. baby's dead right madeline's baby <laughs> yeah that's, that's a dead baby <laughs> okay uh yeah, maybe this butcher guy isn't all that great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when I, blowing up babies he was like all right fuck it <laughs> when i first saw the ending i was actually kind of upset they left it on such a cliffhanger i forgot how much i hate watching a season when it first comes out because then it ends on a cliffhanger i'm like fuck i gotta wait a whole year now yeah I was 100%. Because <laughs> I didn't know it was the second season until after I finished. So I thought I was going to get a resolution at the end of the yeah. cliffhanger. I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, I don't mind a go- good cliffhanger when it's something like this. Because I was watching the time and it was getting closer to the end. I'm like, <laughs> how are they going to wrap this up? Well, I didn't. they, they didn't go back to, to Huey either. Right. It's yeah. like they just abandoned it. Billy's saying that Stillwell is Homelander's weakness because it's the one thing that he actually loves and cares about. But then they set up an entirely new kryptonite with his his child. Mm-hmm. And this woman, Becca Butcher, who Billy thought Homelander had raped her, but she was actually just getting it on. She was having was a yeah. I don't, I don't. He said they did, but then they showed the video. I didn't, they kind of... I think it was, it was consensual. Yeah, it seemed, it seemed so. It seemed like, because Homelander, as, as diabolical as he is, I mean, I, I don't get that impression from him, even though... In the Maybe, c- he lets people die, he's a fucking so- psych- psychopath. You stay the fuck back, I'm a laser, you goddammit! Well, put a bad taste in my mouth, and, uh, you guys touched on it earlier, but... So you think, wait, 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 you think maybe Becca's being held hostage? Yeah, Maybe, I, she's I doing it that. to protect her family and yeah. stuff like that, because she did go to Voight, and they obviously knew, so maybe it was part of the non-disclosure that she had to leave, or... Her family would be affected. You don't want to piss off fucking Homelander. Yeah. I think it's still very possible. They That's what she up. said. She said, well, I'm scared had, of you. Well, the thing is, he had no idea. Yeah. He didn't know that the child was even born, that I think they left conceived. it like, up in the air. So it could go either way. When Billy finds out maybe that you know, she left him for Homelander or something like that or cheated on him, and maybe that's how he rationalized it, but I don't yeah. know. And also Homelander taking matters into his own hands several times. In the beginning, that first scene where he takes down the airplane with the mayor of Baltimore. That was just his decision. He wasn't given orders to do that by Stillwell. Yeah. And even creating the supervillains. It's a genius <laughs> idea for him to give this compound V to different subjects in the Middle East. Oh, we have super terrorists now. You have to put me in the army. Yeah. So I, that boy Homelander was, he was little fingering. That's why I love that, like, the whole the whole plot for this show, well, first season at least, was to take down Vought and it doesn't happen because now they have to use them. It, it it wasn't a waste because we got all this all this accomplished. But yeah, it's a great way for Vault to win, and it's a great yeah, exactly. way to set up the next season sequels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what he said. He's like sequel after sequel <laughs> after sequel. Well, it's smart by Homelander too to go this route because he is powerful enough to just strong arm strong arm any everyone and just be like, hey, I'm your ruler now. Yeah, but it's like the way he's still he wants trying to win him over. Yeah, he's trying to have the public behind him as well it's smart the difference between being elected or just taking power yeah he strong arms the people that are close to him yeah and at the er- very end i mean who's who stands in in his way gus Fring. forgot about gus he needed he needed more screen time <laughs> <laughs> what's he this guy so- only getting cameos yeah know, just man, seeing him again on, was man. just fantastic <laughs> i hope he's got more of a role in season two i guess we really didn't talk about huey and starlight's relationship either that's kind oh, yeah. of like the main driving force for those two characters it's yeah. they have their world where it's all hectic and crazy and then when they're together they're finally actually can like calm down and be themselves and it works. I think that's what brings them together. You know, they both had these terrible experiences and they're able to come together and realize who they really are. And they help each other along that. Yeah, with Starlight and her mother, when she finds out that she was given this substance as a child that made her a superhero, she believed that she was chosen 
And her mother was like, yeah, you were chosen by yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I chose this path for God you. God chose me to choose Religion. you. God chose, chose Void. Back in 1776, <laughs> God chose George Washington to yeah. lead the rebellion. But yeah, Are you th- mad as a kid, though? I'm not mad. I'm a superhero. Are you kidding me? Well, it's weird because it's like, what What am I? What, what is this? You're a superhero. Yeah, am I a superhero or am I just some freak that was manufactured in a laboratory? That's what it feels like to- You're a superhero. Further the interests of a corporation. You're a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> you take this deal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course you would. <laughs> Te- the Homelander Teddy would be. You think Homelander's bad? Imagine Teddy as Homelander. The ruckus that you'd be called. Stupid. Do you pick your powers? I wonder. I mean, they didn't touch on that. Do you pick your powers? I think yeah. There's probably like a plan. You know, like <laughs> if you if you want like Mesmer's parents would probably like just give me the cheapest shit. <laughs> yeah. For the diamond package, you get this. this yeah, this. yeah, yeah. They have, you can fly, and it's billed yearly or monthly. Yeah. You know? Um, Starlight got the the ten year plan. Yeah. Up front, I didn't like her powers. What? I thought her powers were awesome. No, were I wasn't a fan of it. I liked uh, translucent. I liked I liked translucent. I'm pretty. I'm pissed they killed him. You like? I like part you like. I like the one his when he character. sneaks into the women's bathrooms and spies on people. You like that part? No, I didn't like that. But I guess I shouldn't yeah, say you, that. You're going to say you're a good <laughs> Homelander. Yeah. You'd, you'd be a god awful Homelander. He had a terrible Long Island accent or New York accent. Whatever they were trying to go with. Who? Translucent. Yeah, he did. Homelander's going to find you. And when he does, he's going to burst you wide open. I'm going to make it home in time for cocktails because that's who you are and that's who I am. You're not the hero of the story. And I'm not the one who's trapped. So I think I would put this season out of 10, if I had to put a number, which I usually do on Instagram, story, 9.3 out of 10. I really enjoyed this season. I think it's the best season of television that I've seen this year. And we'll see who can compete with the boys. I'm giving it a 9.2. Oh my God, your price is right. <laughs> your price is right. I can't give the same, uh, same score. Yeah, you can. All right, nine point three. I was so mad that you put that up first. I probably switch mine to a nine point two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was really feeling it. Probably go eight and a half. I think the initial first two episodes were really intriguing and it got me invested. Then it kind of took a little bit of a dip and picked up at the end, like most shows do. But I mean, it's still very solid. I can't wait for a season two. Yeah. I was telling Bo before I forgot there was source material, so I did look up something for a character and I kind of got spoiled. I don't know if it's they're going to get to that or they kind of they maybe might have changed it, but. I think I might just read the comic. I think I might do that too, yeah. Yeah. And then just hope that they do the comic. I don't know. I feel like you should just wait for... Nah, that's a long time it's a fucking year. Yeah, Ted, you just don't want to read it. I don't. It's I'm, trying to, I'm trying to there shed light on it. It's pop-ups too. Can you audio book graphic novels? <laughs> that's Yo, the future. that'd be solid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, they, buy, I'd buy stock in that. They fight. Two pages. Okay, dialogue again. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you for watching this video, and of course we would like to thank our Patreon supporters. Without you guys, Nerd Soup wouldn't be Nerd Soup. Seriously, your support is what keeps the fridge full, so thank you once again for your support. If you are interested in supporting Nerd Soup through Patreon, visit our page and check out the different rewards we offer to our fans. If not, then no problem. We appreciate anyone who takes time from their day to watch our videos. So thank you to each and every one of you out there watching, and remember to like and share this video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like it. Or don't. 